Oh, I, I yes. confess, I wore vibrating panties on a flight as a flight attendant, and I gave the remote control to the other flight attendant who used it during our beverage service. Sex. Almost everybody does it, and almost nobody talks about it, except at Bedpost Confessions, a live storytelling series based in Austin, Texas. Whether the performers are funny, informative, political, or completely personal, the anonymous confessions from the audience are the stars of every show. Stories heard at Bedpost Confessions explore themes of sexuality, gender identity, dating, marriage, masturbation, breakups, health and wellness, and more. Whether the story is hysterical or downright emotionally raw, we hope Bedpost Confessions will either spark a fantasy or start a conversation. Maybe even both. This is called uh, Everybody's First. The year that I turned 20 years old, I decided I was going to finally find myself sexually. I had just gotten back from studying abroad in Brazil where I had realized two things. One, I really liked sex. And two, I had no idea how to talk about sex. Just the word sex would make me turn completely red and anxious. So I went to talk to my therapist about it, which is something about me at 20. <laughs> And she suggested that I start exploring by myself more to figure out exactly what I wanted so I could better communicate that to my partners. And being the millennial I am, the first place I went to try and find myself was the internet. <laughs> and what I found that I really liked was the stuff on kink.com. So I immediately tried to implement some of the things I saw on the 30 second free previews. <laughs> with my current partners, um, but they told me that I made them uncomfortable. So I stopped trying and dumped them. <laughs> I was very driven at 20. Um, <laughs> after I had seen all of the 30 second free previews multiple times each, had bookmarked my favorites and even memorized parts of them, I got up the courage to finally go looking for the real thing, for real kink. Um, I found FetLife pretty quickly after that. FetLife is the 90s shitty version of Facebook for kinky people. <laughs> and it would become my source of inspiration, drama, and friendship for the next three years. Um, there I found the 18 to 35 year old group here in Austin and starting to go, started going to their meetups called Munches. Um, <laughs> pretty regularly. And about a week after that, I met my first play partner, Josh, whose name is obviously changed for this. <laughs> um, during my first couple of months in the scene, uh, I realized that I not only was very sexually responsive to certain dominant submissive dynamics, but I actually really enjoyed the people. Uh, I began absorbing their culture, and I started dealing with new problems I had never dealt bef with before, like lying about all the bruises on my body, um, or orgasming so many times that my abdomen would start cramping and I'd have to take a break from sex for a couple of days. Uh, but the highlight of my first few months in the scene was when I attended my first BDSM party, or my first time, as I so lovingly call it. Uh, the night of the party, me, Josh, and his girlfriend arrived at a very average-looking two-story house in a suburb in North Austin, which I changed around so you can't guess which one that is. Um, <laughs> the street was eerily quiet, and the only thing that looked off were the number of cars parked up and down the street. <laughs> I couldn't help but feel surreal. These were the parties that the priests at my Catholic high school had talked about. <laughs> These were the sex parties and dungeons that your neighbors were having while you slept in your bed next door. <laughs> when we walked in, Josh's girlfriend began waving to her friends, taking off her shoes, and disrobing into expensive lingerie. I stayed fully clothed, in shock, with one hand on the door. Um, see, up until this point, I had only ever played with one person, which was Josh, and I had never really seen other people play except for in porn 
which is very different. Um, I had also not really been around naked people before. <laughs> um, the only time I was ever naked was alone in the shower with one other person under a sheet. And I had just walked into a house full of people in various stages of clothed. Uh, some were on leashes, others were crawling around on the floor, um, and I had never seen so many boobs in my entire life. <laughs> Uh, right past the entryway on a, large count, on a large couch were five completely naked women, boobs out, vulvas out, naked except for their collars, and they were all watching a massive large screen TV with the most hardcore porn I had ever seen on it. But they weren't masturbating or anything, they were just sitting and critiquing the porn. <laughs> Um, the woman on the TV was getting held against the wall by some porn dude that was like four times her size and her mascara was running down her face and he was throwing her onto the bed super dramatically and I was still really terrified um, until one of the women on the couch looked up and said, Jesus, that girl looks so strung out. The one sitting next to her replied, my friend is in porn and she said they offer them meth all the time so they can shoot. The first woman tilted her head sideways examining the screen. Her pussy looks floppy, she muttered. The woman next to her tilted her head to match. Shit, I'd still eat her out, though. All of the women on the couch sighed together and nodded. I remember that so vividly. Um, I turned bright red and almost sprinted past the naked women to the stairs to follow Josh. Immediately at the top of the staircase was a raised stage area. Now, in a normal house, uh, this would have been the playroom or the office. But in this house, it was a dungeon-themed stage. Uh, there was a large dog cage, a spanking bench, and a hard point to tie people up. And there was a small audience of people on the floor watching the scenes in front of them. A very large man was spanking a very naked woman on a spanking bench with a paddle that just felt really mean to me. Uh, <laughs> On the hard point, there was a girl about my age tied up by her hands while her partner was using her as a punching bag. At this point, my adrenaline really started to kick in. Um, the younger girl began screaming and crying, and the naked woman standing next to me leaned over and said, you can always tell when Natalie plays because she screams so goddamn much. Like, <laughs> am I right? She rolled her eyes and chuckled. She stopped chuckling when she saw my shell-shocked, nauseous face. <laughs> now, let me stop for a minute and try and explain to you the crazy thoughts that were going through my head. Um, I had never been so turned on and utterly horrified in my entire life. Uh, the girl in me was mentally comparing my body to the other women around me. Uh, the bisexual in me was hoping no one found out how bad I was at eating girls out. Uh, the masochist in me wanted desperately to switch places with one of these girls, and the normal, which at this point, normal, um, me was internally chanting something along the lines of, this is consensual, this is consensual, there are safe words, you know there are safe words, it's fine. Um, I looked around at the crowd sitting on the floor in various types of costumes. Some were making out, others were just watching with their jaws dropped, and I was curled up into a ball in the corner. At some point, Josh found me and pulled me into another room where his girlfriend was getting spanked by three other lingerie-clad women. I left when one of these girls' fists disappeared into Josh's girlfriend. I spent the rest of the night outside with the smokers, thinking about where my mother had gone wrong. <laughs> I just know that Sadie's mom is here, and it's just hard. Um, <laughs> wondering where my mother had gone wrong and what I was going to do next. Um, a man who would eventually become my boyfriend came up and offered me a beer. First time, he asked. I nodded, shaking slightly. My brain was in literal overload. It's cool. I remember my first time, he responded. Tell me about it, I demanded, desperate for some empathy. And he spun into a tale of drugs, sex, and suburban houses with yoga swings built into hot tubs. He and I would go on to date for about a year. And we would come to be known for our punching bag scenes and ridiculous house orgy parties. Finally, Josh found me again. And after spending another 30 minutes corralling his girlfriend, 
I ended up back in his car and eventually in his bed as his girlfriend death gripped me in her sleep, my first threesome. I decided that I would try to go to one more party, and if I still didn't like it, I would quit the scene forever. Four years later, <laughs> I look back on my time in the scene with fondness, horror, and lots of masturbation material. Um, in the scene, I found a mentor who went on to help me start a career. I apprenticed as a professional dominatrix where I learned to get my CPR certification. <laughs> that I then put on my babysitting resume. <laughs> I was in college. <laughs> and, I, and I made lifelong friends that have seen me naked more times than I can count. Thank you. Maggie Berger. Bed Piss Confessions is produced by Julie Gillis, Mia Martina, and Sadie Smythe. Audio production is by Ian Danskin. You don't have to attend a show to confess. With our confession scroller, you can confess with us anytime on our site at bedpostconfessions.com. Also pick up a copy of our anthology, Bed Piss Confessions, Real Sex, Real People, Real Stories, which features 35 stories and hundreds of audience confessions. Bed Piss Confessions, the anthology, found on Amazon in print and ebook. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, and if you have a sec, please help bring Bed Piss Confessions to more people by rating the podcast. You know how it works. More ratings and reviews equals higher podcast ranking equals more confessions. Thanks for your support, and until next time, we will leave you with a few other confessions from the audience. I confess, in my teens and early 20s, I only masturbated by positioning myself under the faucet during a bath like somehow being clean made it less dirty. <laughs> okay, I confess, I told my husband I was too tired for sex so he could come on my face while I slept. <laughs> now I randomly wake up with crusty eyes and cheeks. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Remember Maggie being like, it's consensual, it's consensual, it's yes. consensual. <laughs> I confess, I fantasize, I fantasize about overcooking eggs in front of Gordon Ramsay to the point where he gets so mad that he throws me on the kitchen counter to make sweet, angry love to me. <laughs> yes!